Hi. In this particular lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, creating our own methods. Uh, the idea of creating a method, or using a method, what a method is, is not a new thing. You've been using methods almost throughout uh, this. Methods are things that objects can do. So, for instance, if I click on a particular object, and as you can see, I'm back to the alien encounter program. So I'm going to click on the spider ro uh, robot object and under the methods tab I can see all kinds of methods there. But these are methods that were uh, created for us, that were created by the person who designed the spider robot object. And we're kind of stuck with those methods. What if we want to do something that's not specific to these particular methods? What if we wanted to create our own methods? Well, we can. And that's what we're going to be starting with today. Now, when we're working with methods, there are actually two different types of methods that we can work with. Um, the first type of method is actually the type of methods we've been working with all along, these methods that are associated with particular objects. So, for instance, all the methods that are underneath uh, that we see right now are all connected to the spider robot object. Okay. And these methods came from the spider robot class when we instantiated a spider robot object. If I instantiated another spider robot object into this particular world, it would have the same set of methods. So these methods are connected to the class of spider robots, and they're therefore called class level methods. Okay. The other type of methods that you can have are not methods that are connected to a particular object, but methods that are connected to the world in general, the entire program. And these are called, not surprisingly, world level methods. So if I click on the world up here at the top and look under the methods tab, you will see that there actually is one world level method. It's called my first method. And in fact, here it is right here. It's the method that we've been working with. Okay, so we've already been working with a world level method. We just haven't we just it's called my first method and we didn't draw that much attention to it. What we're going to be doing today is looking at creating some more world level methods. Okay, beyond this one. Class level methods are a little bit more involved, and we're going to be looking at those in a, in a future lesson. So for today, we're just going to look at world level methods. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this uh, alien encounter program, and actually I want to draw a little bit of attention to something about it. Um, this isn't a, the exact same alien encounter program that I left with from the previous video in the, or in the previous lesson. The previous lesson, um, we were talking about simple control structures like ifs and loops, and I took those out. Okay, so if you look down the program, you'll see the ifs and the loops have been taken out. It's back to the version that was there at the end of chapter 2. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be modifying this program as per the instructions uh, begin on section 4-1 on page 75 of your textbook. So if you have your textbook with you, you can follow along with your textbook. And actually what we're going to do is not get this program to do anything new. What we're going to do is we're going to take it, we're going to break it up a little bit. If I take a look at this program, I can sort of visualize this whole little story taking place in three different, three different parts. Okay. There's the first part where the alien sticks, moves up and says its thing, it says slissy toes, and then the spider robot spins its head around. Okay. Spider robot's been surprised by the alien. That's kind of the first part. And then what happens? Well, the spider robot goes to turn to face the alien, and then it moves towards the alien and the legs move. That's this whole do together business. Okay. So that's kind of the second part, right? First it's surprised, and then it's going to go and investigate what's going on with the alien. Then the alien disappears, or it drops back down below the rock. The robot turns to face the camera, and it says its little punchline of Houston, we have a problem. So that's kind of the third part of this little story, uh, the, kind of the conclusion, the little, uh, and that we're going to call that the react part. So first, the robot is surprised, then the robot investigates, then the robot reacts. So we're going to take this program, and we're going to break it up into three separate methods called surprise, investigate, and react. Okay, and then we're going to look at each of those separately. And this process um, of taking a computer programming problem and breaking it up into smaller sections, smaller pieces, is what computer programmers call stepwise refinement. Okay. And it's a very common technique for attacking computer problems as they get bigger. Now, to be honest, this one's not particularly huge. You could 
probably understand everything that's going on without having to think about it in smaller pieces. So it might feel a little artificial to have to break this program up. But as programs become more sophisticated, it becomes very advantageous not to try and take in the whole program at the same time, but to instead look at individual pieces of that program and just working on those individual pieces. And again, doing that, breaking it up into separate little pieces is what we call stepwise refinement. It makes the programs easier to write. It makes the programs easier to debug, in other words, easier to test and try to figure out where things go wrong because it's easy to identify which piece of it uh, is going wrong, or at least it's going to be easier. It also makes it possible that if you have more than one person working on a particular program, which on a commercial program would happen all the time, right? Uh, the vast majority of commercial software that's produced is not produced by a single individual. These programs are way too massive to, to be done by just one person usually. They're done by teams of people. So by breaking the program up through this process of stepwise refinement, it allows you to give each individual their own particular tasks. And they can work on just getting their particular piece working together. And then all the pieces can come together in the final program. OK, so let's look at how are we going to go about creating our own world level methods and called surprise, investigate, and react. And then, uh, and then use, you know, and it's actually surprisingly easy. First, make sure you have the world selected and the methods tab here. And then underneath there, it says create new method. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that. And we want this first method to be called surprise. So we type in surprise. All right. And you can see two things happened. Number one, over here under World Details under the Methods tab, we now have a new method called Surprise under our My First Method. And also, we have a new tab over here. My First Method is still there, all the stuff that we had before, but now we have a new method, which is the exact same structure as the previous one, except now, of course, it doesn't have any, you know, because we've got to put our Surprise part in it. Now, if you follow the instructions that are in the textbook, what the textbook wants you to do is to reconstruct these first four lines in the world surprise to write them again. And you can do that if you want, but you got to know there's an easier way. So I'm going to show you a quick trick on how you can get these first four lines here into the surprise method without having to reconstruct them again. So I'm going to drag a do and order block way up here to the top of my first method. There it is. And then I'm going to take each of the lines that I want to go over to the surprise method and drag them in there, of course, being careful to make sure I don't mess up the order. I don't want things happening in a different order. So all this block of code, everything in this do in order, I want now in the surprise method. And the way I do that is by grabbing the whole block, the whole do in order block, and way up here at the right, I have a clipboard. You may or may not have noticed that. So I drag that to the clipboard, let it go. Okay, that's now been copied to the clipboard. I now click on the Surprise tab, go back to my clipboard, and drag that down to where it says Do Nothing, let go, and now all of those get copied over there. A lot easier than simply uh, reconstructing those. Now that I've done that, I don't need a second copy, so I'm going to take this copy that was in my first method, and I'm going to drag that up to the trash can so it's gone. Okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Play. And I want you to watch what happens. Time. Do you notice anything? Maybe I'll hit, hit restart one more time. See how the alien doesn't come up? We don't get that whole business of the alien coming up. We don't get the slithy toes bit, and we don't get that the alien, the robot head spinning his head around bit. And that's because we have dragged all of those steps over to the surprise method. And there's nothing in the program that tells us to execute these now. I want to draw attention to a window we haven't talked too much up here called the events window up here at the top right. And actually, event-driven programming is a pretty sophisticated topic that we're only going to barely get into in this particular course. But I think this first line is fairly self-explanatory. When the world starts, do world my first method. So that's telling you when you press the play button, it's telling Alice, when you press the play button, you're going to do my, the, my first method. So it's going to go to my first method, and it's going to start here. And the first thing it's going to do is get the spider robot turn to face the alien, and it does the move. And it, and it missed the whole part that's in the surprise. So if we want to execute the surprise, one thing we can do is we can go back up here to our events window, and we can hit the little down triangle, and we can change that to the surprise method now. So now it says when the world starts, do the surprise method. So we're going to press play. 
And now it just does the surprise method, right? Alien sticks its head up, alien says slithy toes, robot's head spins around. But it doesn't do my first method. Of course, we want it to do both. We'll get to that in a second. But actually changing this thing in the event window is a great way to test individual methods. If you want to make sure each individual method does what it's supposed to do without having to run the whole program, uh, changing this in the event window is actually really useful. I'm going to change it back to my first method. And we're going to create our next method. So I'm going to create a new method. Our next one is going to be called uh, investigate. There we go. And in the investigate method, I want the robot to turn to face the alien on wheels, and I want it to do this whole uh, move towards the alien. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same trick. I'm going to drag a new do an order up here. Whoops, I missed it. Get up there. I missed again. I'm doing very well. There we go. I'm going to drag each of these lines up in here. Notice I just had to drag the whole do together. So that's now what I want in my investigate. Drag that over to the clipboard to copy it. Select the investigate method. Drag that down to here. And actually, I'm going to do something else with the investigate method. I'm going to modify um, that comment just a little bit. It's nice at the beginning of any new methods that you have to always have the comment so that the first time someone goes to take a look at your method, um, it explains exactly what's going on in your method. So I'm going to modify this one, delete the whole old one there. Okay, and it's going to be spider robot turns to face alien and then moves forward as its legs, legs walk. Okay, always at the beginning of a new method, get in the habit of putting a comment that just explains what that method does. It makes it really easy for someone looking at your code so that they can sort of piece it together. Okay, our final method is going to be a React method. Oh, and by the way, if you want to, just to show this real quick, if I want to make sure the investigate is doing what it's supposed to do, I can click on just the investigate part. The robot should turn to face the alien, the robot should do the walk, and that's it. That's all the investigate does. Finally, our last method is called uh, create new method, and it's going to be called react. Let me click OK. And in the react method, just goes, oh, wait, I should trash all this. Catch up here. Don't need that no more is actually all this. I don't have to create a new do in order. This is my whole React method. So I'm going to drag that over to the clipboard. Drag that down to here. There's my React method. I'm going to put a comment at the top. Because I want to describe this particular method. And this method is what does it do? Alien. I just want to match exactly what the book does. On wheels hides and spider robot sends a message back to Earth. Boink. That looks good. All right. And now we don't need this. And you can see now we've taken every bit of code that was in my first method and we have transpose it into here. So, we know we can call each of these methods individual, but what I want to do is call these three methods in order. And actually, that is amazingly easy. Now that I've created the methods, I can put a do in order in my first method. I can say, first, we're going to do surprise. Drag that in. Then we're going to do investigate. Then we're going to react. And again, it's nice to put some comments in there explaining what's going on. So we're just going to have three comments. One at the start of each of these methods just to explain what's going on. And this one is alien on wheels and spider robot. And another comment.
And finally, one more comment. Oops. Alrighty, there we go. One advantage. I mean, right now, everything our program does, oh, I guess maybe we should give it a test, make sure it still does everything it's supposed to do, so we'll watch this through. It should be all familiar by now. Goes to investigate, goes down, turns to face, turns right to Houston, we have a problem. All right. One advantage. You know, right now, our program actually works exactly the same way. Notice, by the way, how nice and compact and neat all this is, right? And if the uh, person wants looking at our program wants to be able to you know know the details of what's going on in each of these we can they can simply explore each method individually one nice thing about having these is like look remember we only had the spider robot take one set one set of steps towards the alien what if we wanted it to take two set of steps well all we have to do now is call investigate twice right? there's one nice thing we can do now what happens now so instead of having to get into moving all kinds of codes, this makes this really easy. Now he goes and investigates twice. There we go. And of course, you could put that in a loop if you want. You can do all kinds of things. So it gives you a lot more uh, ability to do more sophisticated things, but in a, in a much, much simpler way. Okay, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be exporting this as an HTML code, and you're going to be sending that in to me.